The Kings celebrating a 7-2 victory over the Surrey Eagles uh, here in leg two of this nine-game homestand at the Hat Parker Arena. Joined here by brand-new Kings defenseman Adam Brubaker. Adam, let's uh, let's talk about that one because really a tale of two games. You go the first 20 minutes and probably one the Kings aren't necessarily too happy about. Very reminiscent of Friday night. A lot of chances generated, but just not a whole ton on the finish there. Yeah, I know. I, I thought we started off a little slow, maybe a little sluggish from uh, Friday's game, but mm -hmm. we definitely picked it up in the second, got our legs moving, our forwards did some work down low, and mm -hmm. uh, we got rewarded for that for sure. Let's go into the second period and really a turning of the tide. As you said, the, the, the feet got moving. Gavin Rouser, I mean, he's a guy that epitomizes that, and I imagine just in a couple of weeks here on the team, you've noticed that's the style of game that Gavin plays, the Energizer Bunny. How big was that goal to kind of kickstart things, the, the, the way that it came, and the guy that scored it, Gavin Rouser, is not a noted goal scorer, but gets those energy goals, gets those greasy ones. I think it was huge. You know, He, he uh, definitely got rewarded for his play there, worked hard, mm -hmm. uh, got some speed on the guy, and uh, put it bonk for sure. <laughs> I'm liking that term bong. I think Nick Collation came up with that a couple of weeks ago or, or, or whatnot. He brought that out on an interview. Uh, the, the power play, Tom, obviously, uh, your role there on, on Kyle Betts' one late in the frame. Just talk us through that setup because the Kings had looked good on the man advantage. It was probably the best they looked in the first period when they had their one chance there. But uh, just take us through that offensive setup and, and obviously resulting in uh, Kyle Betts getting in the way of one of your shots. Uh, we just tried to get it up top, get it in a 1-3-1, one, one, and then uh – Rue tried to get it over to me for a one-timer. I just let it go, tried to get it on net, and Kyle tipped it in nice. You, you mentioned uh, Ryland Ball there. We've coined you the Brew and Rue combination here. Uh, second game together with, with Ryland. Uh, two very offensive guys. I mean, Ryland likes to skate. You've obviously got the shot, which we've seen twice already this season, uh, beat opposition netminders. Uh, we talked with Ryland in our first intermission about that combination. From your vantage point, new to the team and joining with a guy like Ryland, how's that pairing worked out for you? I think I, I really like it so far. He's a nice, nice skilled guy. He moves the puck well, mm -hmm. and he's really uh, offensive as well as good defensively. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that helps my game as well, being a strong partner. I wanted to take you back to your days in, in Prince George because you played the Eagles. You said you've been to South Surrey four times. Had you guys completed the season series against Surrey before no, the drain? No. Okay. They uh, had to play a couple games at home. Couple of, see, I mean, you'd seen them a fair number of times. How had the games gone between Surrey and Prince George? Because, I mean, this one aside, the previous two against Powell River had been one-goal games, and, and they're a team like Alberta where you just never really were able to put them away. They were always close games. We took them to double overtime, had 65 shots, mm -hmm. and still couldn't beat them. So they were always good games, good hardworking games. This one here, was there a point where you ever kind of felt comfortable? I mean, even with the, the two-goal lead, and I know you went with the Kings at this time, but the Kings had a three-goal lead at the showcase, and, and that wound up being a, a, a one-goal game. Was there ever a comfort level here tonight, or was not until the final buzzer went where you finally felt, okay, we can breathe? I think till the final buzzer. You know, after that five-goal second, we knew it was going to be a tough period. They mm -hmm. weren't going to give up easy, and we had to score a couple more to give us a little cushion. Playing here at the Hat Parker Arena, you, your first uh, experience here uh, in Power River as a hometown player. You were here with the Spruce Kings back earlier this season. Uh, you got a little bit of, you got your feet wet on the road last weekend. How is it back here in Powell River with the green jersey on? I like it so far. <laughs> it's good to be back in the green and gold, and uh, the fans are really good here. I guess that was the green and gold in Elmira, wasn't yep. it? So this isn't too, too uh, I guess, unfamiliar for you. Um, obviously, this nine-game homestand, for you coming into this program, it's an, I imagine the same with you and Brandon Kennedy. It's a chance to just embed yourself here. I mean, this probably can't come at a better time for you. Yeah, it's really good. You know, having those home games, it's good to get settled in here, mm -hmm. get some practices, and really get some good rest at home. Adam, we'll let you get back down to the room. Thank you so much for coming up and doing this. Uh, Fortis BC Energy Player of the Game tonight. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Brock, uh, let's start with that opening 20, because it was eerily reminiscent to what we saw through 60 last night. I mean, the Kings had chances. They outshoot the Eagles 10-6 to in the frame. You have a power play. It looked pretty decent. A couple of good looks, but again, just couldn't find the back of the net and a lot of chances going wanting courtesy that one extra move or that one extra pass. Oh, that's just it. Um, you know, you, pretty solid period. I thought, uh, you know, our effort was there, but uh, no, like you mentioned, we didn't throw enough towards the net. Yeah, we had 10 shots, but mm -hmm. they weren't uh, very high quality scoring chances, so uh, we were coming right down Main Street there and, and looked to make a little pass or that extra little move instead of just snapping it. And, uh, you know, once we figured that out in, in the second, we scored some nice goals from in that home plate area and the, the high quality scoring zone. You look at, uh, as, as I said, you know, the home plate area, that kind of six foot radius around the net. I mean, you look at Johnny Evans' goal, Carter Turnbull's goal. You know, Gavin Rouser was able to cash in from not too far out either with some good work down the wing by Austin Kamer. Was that a message there through 20 to try and get the guys more traffic in front of Davidson who has it, had it pretty easy in that opening 20? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously we knew we had to, uh, you know, pull up our socks a little bit and, and put the work boots on and get, you know, get back to, to getting
getting greasy and mm -hmm. going to the areas to score. So, um, you know, once we uh, regrouped in the room and, uh, you know, down one after 20, just not getting a stick in front of the net, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, regroup and, uh, and get back to work. And then all of a sudden it's, uh, you know, bang, bang, we're, we're putting pucks in the net. And um, guys were guys were feeding off the energy, obviously, get, you know, rebounds, shooting fire pad for mm -hmm. rebounds and cashing in. So, um, you know, guys stepped up and started getting, you know, putting their nose down and going to that area to score. The, uh, the scoring, again, coming from, from all up and down the lineup. I mean, Gavin Rouse has had a great weekend. Um, you know, got, got recognized on Friday night for his play. Gets first star here tonight with a pair of goals uh, and an assist. That line with Mitchell Haas and Austin Camer has got a good amount of balance. Curtis McCarrick, Johnny Evans, Carter Turnbull, a good amount of balance. And then the trio that you've had since the Christmas break with Tristan Mullen, uh, Kyle Betts, and, and Liam Lawson. It seems to be a very balanced lineup, and that's without a guy like Nick Collision who's got double-digit goals this season. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's nice when you get all four lines scoring. Obviously, uh, you know, juggle them off a little mm -hmm. bit there at the end and, and put Finney up with, uh, with Betts and Mullen, try to... Get him a goal here I on know, home ice <laughs> for you. So uh, <laughs> no, uh, you know, and, and guys are all on board with it. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it's fun when you when you're winning and everybody's scoring and you're rolling lines and, and playing solid. So um, no, it's uh, yeah to to get scoring up and down the lineup. I mean, obviously Nicky brings an element of uh, physicality and mm -hmm. so, some you know tenacity in his game. And uh, you know, with him out of the lineup, other guys stepped up. I thought we did a good job at, at finishing hits and playing physical and. Uh, and moving forward and getting pucks out on the wall. I mean, their D did a, a good job in the first period of limiting our, our entry into the zone by mm -hmm. pinching us off at the blue. So once we started coming through the neutral zone with, with better speed and supporting, we were getting a lot of opportunities. You, Kent Lewis brought up the, the rotation element that the Kings are trying to implement here, here down the stretch. And he said, you know, guys will find themselves out of the lineup, not really for doing anything. It's just the fact that maybe it's their, their turn to sit. How important is that down the stretch, I guess, to use your 22 and, and be in a position and, and knock on wood, it continues to, to continue to use a full 22 here? Oh, for sure. It's definitely huge. I mean, you know, guys, yeah, they're a little disappointed they're not in the lineup, mm -hmm. but hey, you, you take it, you know, with a grain of salt and, and you come to work every day. So, um, no, I mean, obviously, Nona sat today with uh, with Halasian, just, uh, you know, talked to him. I didn't think he played bad Friday, but mm -hmm. not at his best. And, and just told him, you know, hey, just take it as a maintenance day, get some rest, you know, take the day off and, and, and enjoy it. So um, plus you get a little bit of a different perspective watching up above, mm -hmm. right? You can see what your teammates are doing and, uh, you know, learn from other guys in the game. So, um, you know, a little bit different watching, but it's also, you know, a good learning experience as well. Let's uh, look ahead to next weekend and uh, two very different games because you get two interdivisional games and it, it can be often really tough to, to scout uh, what you're going to get there. Kings have been good against the Coquitlam Express, but it's been a while since the showcase and the Kings visit back there in, what, October or mm -hmm. early November, I think it was. Uh, and then obviously West Kelowna was kind of the team that, that put the brakes on for the Kings this season. The, the shutout there, the Kings had a little bit of success against Wenatchee and then a bit of a tailspin with, with, with six straight, uh, two very big games for the Kings to prove themselves down the stretch. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you got 14 games left, so... Uh, you know, you're jockeying for, for playoff position, so points are so valuable. So especially when you're playing teams outside of the conference, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you got to get those points when they're available. So, no, I mean, Coquitlam, they're going to work hard. They're a quick skating team. Obviously, we come up here and play on a little bit bigger ice than down there yep. at the uh, Poirier Sports Complex. So, so. I'm a gloss as well. I always feel like I'm in a Lego arena at the Poirier <laughs> yeah. Sports and Leisure Complex. Yeah, so, you know, they're going to be good. I mean, they got some, some good skill up front. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, they've... Uh, you know, probably feel like they've underachieved a little bit this year, but uh, no, I mean they're in a good playoff spot, and and we'll have to battle uh, probably Chilliwack in the first round. So obviously they're looking to get the, get their ball rolling, but no, they'll be good, they'll be fast, and that'll be a good game. And then uh, yeah, you mentioned West Kelowna coming, and I think that will be a physical contest. Obviously, um, you know they're they're a quick team, they, mm -hmm. they work hard, and they're 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 mean. I mean it uh, it wasn't an easy night in there, and. Um, you know, granted, we didn't play our best, and, and we, we shied away from the, the physical play. So, um, you know, different game when you're on home ice. I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take the week here to rest up and, and have some good practices and get ready for next weekend. Certainly West Kelowna in a dogfight for home ice advantage against probably a, a Salmon Arm Silverback first-round uh, opponent there. I mean, Salmon Arm had control of that spot most of the season, and West Kelowna has played on well. So, uh, Brock, thank you for bringing up uh, Adam. Congratulations on a 7-2 victory tonight and 2-0 uh, so far in this nine-game homestand. Thank you. Yes, thank you.